This episode of Co-op is brought to you by GoDaddy. How, how many times have I told you not to park over the, those meters? Like, dude, uh, I mean, come on. Like, it doesn't how matter. Many, like, it doesn't like, matter. It's a fucking scam. That's all it is. Dude, dude, dude you might as well just hoof it, my friend. No, no. Why the fuck would I but do please, that? Dude, it's no. costing you more money. I'm telling you. Yes. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Plus, enter code CO6 when you check out and save an additional 20% off of one, two, or three-year hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details and get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. There's six. There's six of us. We could all we could all start playing right now. Right. Yeah. It's true. Or, although we couldn't we could actually connect. do our own private match because to do a private match you need a full goddamn game to start it up. Just so you know. Yeah. We tried to do that the other day and it takes 16 players yeah. in the game before you can even start it. That's me starting this whole conversation off negatively. Now we can, now we can love on it. I mean, so far I've played played uh, way too much of it. It's kind of become my uh, palate cleansing game. <laughs> where I jump into it in between whenever I need like a break. I've uh, been jumping in and uh, using it as a power cleanser during work hours and stuff mostly and I've been playing a ton of it. I'm at a, uh, I was just telling them I just got the 100 match achievement. Lieutenant now. That might be, yeah, he's yeah, like the highest Tuttle. person I know. Like uh, I, my guy can't even like, yeah. would have to like call you sir with his head looking <laughs> at the ground. Yeah, I've been playing a bunch. I, uh, it's funny, I started out using a, like the sniper. I was just like straight up sniper and I'm usually not a sniper in most games. Like most games I'm kind of average, but for some reason, this one I've just been like headshotting dudes all over the place. That's like the exact opposite for me. I am terrible with that sniper rifle. Yeah. At least in getting single shot kills, like you can shoot him once and I get assists all over yeah, the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but well, those yeah. assists add up too when you're a sniper because even if you just get a wound, you know, five points here, three points there, and like it all. Yeah. The up. other great thing about the sniper class is it's almost the most effective anti-vehicle class in the game. Yeah. Like even though there's Hide a the bushes, yeah, even though there is a class <laughs> specifically marked like anti-vehicle class, yeah. I feel the sniper is the best counter. I like uh, I like it that he's so camouflaged that you can just cut literally kind of hide in the bushes and just wait for stuff to come by or like uh, I was telling somebody that uh, last night I uh, put a bunch of uh, C4 on a plane and then hid in the bunker and make the enemy base and watch this guy took off and just plunge it. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Satisfying. I've been switching classes like depending on what map it is like yeah. like Iwo Jima I think I, I usually play as a sniper and then like other maps I might play more like the rifleman but it, it all just kind of depends I guess. I never me. played a lot of riflemen until really? like just a couple days ago I started really getting into it with like the grenade and stuff. And, 
the kill, the rifle's so powerful too. That, I think with yeah. the sniper, I just miss more, like most of the time. But with like the rifleman, I can kind of get pretty good far shots. And even if I miss the, like a couple times, I still have like a couple more rounds, just like trial and error, you know. <laughs> I usually play as a sniper, but um, I'm used to using the mouse and keyboard. Oh, yeah. So I was like, you know, I was zeroing in, but I was always missing with the sniper. And it was really pissing me off. So I finally <laughs> went over the submachine gunner. Yeah. And I really like the submachine gunner, honestly. Uh, I don't feel like the rocket launcher is powerful enough against tanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. You really have to like be moving around and hiding and everything. But if you know what you're doing, I, actually it's really good anti-infantry. What can I say? Uh, you shoot them really fast. They go I, down so fast. I'm always like playing, I'm always switching classes throughout my whole match because I'm always like, tr I think I'm playing catch up and I think that's why I'm not that good at oh. it. So I'm like, oh fuck, there's a bunch of tanks and whatever I was, I just died. I'm like, now I'm going to be anti-tank. And then when I spawn, I'm like, all oh, the tanks are gone. They're already destroyed. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, now I'm like, now I have the wrong weapons and all these snipers are shooting me from afar. <laughs> And then whenever I'm a sniper, there's, I was, I'll sit there and nothing happens for like five minutes, like no one's around. So I, I feel like I'm always like one step behind. I'm always a, like the wrong class because I'm always trying to do whatever is currently going on. But by the time you spawn in, you're too late for that anyway. See, everything we're describing right now is too is like when I'm playing by myself, which is granted how I play a lot because right now the multiplayer joining with your friends is kind of forked. But uh, like when me and Tyler do play together, like it's never like that. We never sit there and think like, oh, I'm going to be a sniper. Like the whole time, first thing me and Tyler do is like, let's find a Jeep and ride together. Together, right? <laughs> and we're just like ride or die squad. We yep. roll into a base, we never even get out, and then we take it, and then we'll just run into a tank, we'll just drive past it, keep going. <laughs> and the whole time, like, we just try and do like talk on the voice chat and just like give out a call while we go by. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> so drive on by. Yeah, <laughs> I try even to like time the, the, the horn on the Jeep to go. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys so, use the planes much? When it comes to the plane, there are two kinds of people. There are the people who know what they're doing and are really good, and they, they're they like ruthless. Anti-air superiority in battlefront or battlefield is really important um, because people who know what they're doing can really make people like, people's life miserable. They can bomb the tanks, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. they can fly around strafing stuff, but most of the time people have no idea what they're doing and just suicide a lot. Mm -hmm. or, or, or most people use the plane probably yeah, like Will does, like which do. is like, Hop in, fly to the first yeah. checkpoint early on in the game, and yeah. immediately parachute, and you're gonna see the plane like floating. That's off a great way to sunset. start because you get you can get at least two checkpoints. Yeah. You know, unless you go to one that somebody else does. I mean, you lose a plane in the process. But, but if you want to get a lot of practice, I play a lot on uh, air superiority. Yeah. That's what I played like all of yesterday, and I love that kind of stuff. Uh, just like all these planes flying around. And granted, I wasn't that good. I mean, I got like six kills like per round, but. I don't know how people get like 20 kills in those things because I'm like, you can't shoot them down that fast. I mean, seriously, but I love it when the planes are flying over with the AA because yeah. I can sit in that thing all day and yeah. just shoot people yeah. out of the sky. I like really shooting down the bombers. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's really satisfying because they have like one of the little stamps for shooting down three bombers, which yeah. I finally got the other day. I think they're kind of hard to control. Like, I think I'm a little spoiled by more arcadey vehicle driven mm -hmm. games. Like, even like something like a Warhog in Halo or something like that, or a Banshee or something like that, right? And it's just, I don't know, it's too complicated now, and I understand there's like maybe a reward, you know, a ramp for like people who want to dedicate themselves to it, but the tutorial doesn't help. You know, I think it's a really newbie, unfriendly game. Like even the tank, I don't think drives that well for if you're just kind of experimenting with it. Yeah, especially the battlefield conventions of drawing, driving all their vehicles where they have acceleration and reverse on, on your left trigger. Right. So it, that's a little abnormal for most gamers, and and as far as as much damage as they take, I'm I'm almost torn with the tanks because when you take down a tank, it does take a whole lot of rocket propelled grenades or a lot of a lot of rocket launcher shots. But in a way, it's almost like this team effort. When you see three of your dudes going after the same tank and you all take them down, it's almost like this really victorious moment that you feel, you know, like bound together, like how oh, we helped each other. But at the same time, you feel completely uh, defenseless against the tank if you know if you're not surrounded by a group of people. So. So yeah. 24 people, but uh, you know, for me, it's like a, I think that it's like a perfect thing. Like it doesn't need to be more than that because the great thing about it is that with most maps, there's just enough people that 
you can't be defending and taking every point, so it'll always seesaw. Most of the time, unless you have a really terrible team. But like, if you have a team that's actually doing what they're doing, trying to capture points and not sitting on the deck waiting for a plane to spawn and competing with that, like it'll actually <laughs> seesaw the way that I think it's supposed to be. Like, I, I hardly ever have games that it doesn't kind of come down to like to the, the wire, yeah. One thing I've noticed is that even though there's only uh, three levels, like it hasn't become an issue for me so far at all. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. get bored or anything like that. I think that's kind of a testament to like how well designed these levels were when they were originally released with like Battlefield 1942 and like even 1943, they're still holding up. I really up. hope they continue the kill count thing, you know, like they did with the, the Terra Superiority maps, like 43 million kills. And it's like, I literally, they didn't, it sucked because they didn't update it all weekend either. They had the ticker underneath and it was like at, you know, 222 million kills or whatever for like the whole weekend. It's like, that can't be right. <laughs> yeah. It mean, was like, I want to get more maps and not having to pay for them and getting rewarded for actually playing tons of the game is great. Yeah, I mean, I have to imagine the game's doing really well for itself yeah. considering how many server problems they had early on. Like, <laughs> so. Do you guys care about this game just because it's cheap and on Xbox Live <laughs> on a console? Because it's kind of like, to me, it's not really that different from the original. You know, it's just it's fewer players, there's more, a few more problems even, but just... I think it, be, it being cheap and on a console makes a big difference. I'll say no money. for two reasons. First of all, I don't have it on Xbox Live. I have it on the PlayStation 3. And because I never expected in a million years that I would even be playing this game. I mean, people are- <laughs> but, but is that because of like the low price of entry? No, as, as uh, like... it's because of the demo. Oh. I played the demo, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then it said, sorry, you can't play anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll buy it. And then I saw how cheap it was, and I was actually pretty surprised because I hadn't been following it at all. I was prepared to pay retail price, yeah. uh, so I was really like happy and pleased that it was so cheap. But they had another like six or seven maps or something like that. Yeah. I'd probably play. But what's players. the big deal about this game? Though? It's, I don't think it's really that different from the original. I think it's That's just the it's, it's, awesome. it's not different <laughs> it's from the fun, original. Yeah. It's just I don't think that uh, just as addictive. Not that many people bought bought Bad Company, or at yeah. least not like not a, not as many as Bob bought this because of the low price point. But, um, you know, I just think that it's probably the best Battlefield solution for consoles. Uh, still, I think that a lot of what it comes down to for me is that there's something to be said about World War II era weapons. Like, I, I, I enjoy Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but I still think that the older Call of Duty multiplayers, uh, the first one and the second one, are the best, in my opinion. I just think that there's something so much more satisfying about shooting someone with a bolt-action rifle than an automatic weapon. I think it shows up that they do vehicles well, too. Uh, especially, you know, like you said, it's a little tougher to maybe get, get good at them, but... Um... You know, I think when you look at like the vehicles and like the modern, war or not even the modern warfare games, but the other Call of Duty games, they were just never really that good. I think it's so. a testament to how solid the original game was. I mean, the original game is how many years old? Like seven years old. And Battlefield 1943 is very much a back to basics kind of thing. And it holds up. It holds up really well and it's a lot of fun. At the low price point, everybody comes flooding in and everybody's playing together and going, God, this is really fun. There's something happening all the time all around me. Um, I don't know, I think this game might have like... Seeing the success of 1943 makes me really excited and like, because I've always tried to turn my friends onto the franchise. I just hope that they don't take the financial success as a sign that they don't need to improve their matchmaking, that they don't need to improve their party systems, because these are the, some, of the, some of the things that I feel that hurt the experience the most and it has nothing to do with the gameplay. It seems like it's getting easier to like go and meet your friends if they're already in matches, like you're joining them and stuff. Right. I'm getting a lot, it's a lot less, you know, found game and then drop or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still the party system still just sucks. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You can squad up if you're playing together, but that's, that's about it. Yeah, even the thing with like squatting up, it, it was like, you know, you get all your guys on there, but then like one guy for some reason ends up on the other team it's and it's just, yeah. I don't know, it doesn't make sense. I don't know if killing my friends too. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Where is my car? Oh my god. Oh, where? Uh, I think he got towed, dude. Oh uh, my god. It looks like a driveway, man. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. you know. Oh god. Hey, hold, hold up, dude. I can't I, believe this shit, dude. Did you see this? $1,600 to get my fucking car on the lot. I know, man. I mean, I told you I, that, you I, know. I hate this city, dude. I fucking hate this city. Yeah, it's such bullshit. You know, you should really start thinking about, you know, seriously taking the bus, you know? It'll cost you, it'll no. cost you less. No, it, no. Why would I take I, the bus? I just spent $1,600 to take the bus? No, no. the bus is filled with fat. Ugly, stupid, and stinky motherfuckers. I am never gonna take the bus. Why would I take no? No. Alright, man. Alright, you know. What's wrong, Billy? No money for new games? Well try Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours, at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Co-op fans will get a two-week free trial when they go to Gamefly.com slash co-op. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. I had a lot of fun with Wii Sports. <laughs> How about you guys? I think everybody's gonna kind of gravitate to certain games, but I also think that there's certain games that people are just gonna kind of generally avoid. And uh, Like what? Like, I don't know, I don't see canoeing being all that popular. Any water sport in that game is terrible. <laughs> no, the honest. wakeboarding was good. Like I was in control of the tricks I was doing though. Oh, well, you're not really in control. Like all you really do is like, you know, do that to make you to make your guy jump. And it, depending on how high you jump, he'll do different tricks or whatever. But uh, your only concern is to land flat. I kind of had a little bit of a problem with that sometimes. It would seem like in the wakeboarding, like no matter what I would do, he wouldn't he wouldn't land flat, and I would it would break my uh, break my speed boost. And, and one of the things I would do too, and I sort of noticed you had to do this with a few of the games, was sort of alter the way they tell you to hold the Wii Mote. And so like at first I was holding it like it was a crossbar that you'd be holding onto the tow line. But I found like I just was having a hard time steering and especially doing the jumps, flicking my wrist up. So I was actually holding it on the ends yeah. like this. And when I did that, it was much more easier to level yourself up. Cycling is just no fun at all. I mean, I'll, I watch you play and this. I mean, this is all it is. So you're just yeah. doing this back and, and like, forth. You know, there's turning and like there's the, it, it, they try to implement the, the strategy of cycling, whereas, you know, draft from people, try not to get too tired, coast your bike whenever you can. And uh, like, I saw what they were going for, but the actual playing the game just really isn't any fun. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way about the, uh, the air fighter one too, with like the planes where you're just kind of holding like a paper plane and shooting. You can feel it's really precise, but it's just, it's more of a novelty yeah. than like a game that you really come back to again. I think the problem with that one was like, the island's too big, I think. So there's not a lot of action. I only played two players, yeah. and it's just like you could go through this time where it's like I don't know where the other guy is. There's like it's not really designed to be like a dog fighting game. So. Archery is the best game. It's, it's a really good event. It is, it is the best <laughs> event, in my opinion. Watching Matt play the later state stages where the targets move and there's things in front of you, they like get that really challenge. far away. And, and, it's, like, and it's like 10 mile an hour wind. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, a lot of the games, they, they have like other separate courses or different modes, but a lot of them stay within the, this certain realm of difficulty. And Archer was one of the ones where I felt like single player wise, I could spend a lot of time with that because it looks really, really hard. Like it would take a long time to master, which yes. is definitely a cool appeal of it yeah. for sure. One thing I wish they did with Archery though, you know how they're hidden objects in the levels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually never hit one, but I think you just get a perfect like 10 points. Yeah, I hit one and you, that's all you get is 10 points. It's a lot of work and a lot of trial and error and you probably will lose 600 points just yeah. to get that 10 points. So yeah, I think no it would have been cool if they made it more of a game. I know it kind of gets away from the whole philosophy of what Wii Sports Resort is, right. but like to me, that's like kind of like, okay, here's a little touch for the hardcore gamers. Mm -hmm. You know, let's make a deeper game out of it or a more interesting game out of it. Mm -hmm. I think they could have made like a bird flying by that you have to hit and then mm. it's worth a ton of points. Right. There's just a lot of little things I think missed opportunities there. Right, well, it, it, in a way archery does make sense like that because all the other ones like in sword fighting, you do the sword fighting, you unlock speed slice, you do the speed slice, you unlock mm -hmm. that. Archer, you never unlock any additional modes. Like, no. why couldn't I do like a two-player face-off where we got to shoot an apple off each other's head or something like right. that, right? They did do that in bowling. The 100 pin was one, but there was also the mode in bowling where it's like they start putting obstacles on the lane. It's the curve challenge. And you have to like curve the ball around the obstacles to yeah. hit the pins. And that makes it a lot more interesting than the, just the regular bowling is. Actually, my my, fa my personal favorite event is the sword fighting. Like archery is probably a close second, but I really enjoy like the single player, the the one where they're all the AI ones right. are rushing at you. The waves and, of fighting. Yeah, the, the waves of fighting, and because because you get to the later stages and they get kind of brutal. <laughs> it's like you have to implement a lot of strategy. You have to be really quick with your blocking. You have to make sure you're blocking in the right way. They all have uh, three life hearts over them. So you can't mess up very much. They're very quick on the reaction. It's actually the only, the only game in all of <laughs> Wii Sports Resort that trains you well enough that you can use your, the tactics that you've learned against an actual human player. Yeah. It's also definitely more fun with a group. It's yeah. one of those few games, I mean, there's, there is something to be said about games like Dead Space and Bioshock and those great single player experiences where I want to be in a dark room with a great sound system or headphones and just be by myself and enjoy it. But with Wii Sports Resort, one of the things I like about it is I kind of like want an audience around whenever I'm playing. I would be like, watch how awesome I am. Exactly, well, I mean, you know, when I, when I, the first night we had it, and Matt was Matt was out and we only had one controller, so it was like nighttime, I was in here by myself playing, and I was doing like the three-point shootout, and I it, like went on a great streak, and I finished with like a high score, and after I did it, I was like, my arms are up, and I'm looking around like waiting for the applause. <laughs> like, did you see that? And nothing was there, so it's really fun, not only competitively, it's fun, it's, it's more fun to play against people, but it's really fun to have other groups around to kind of like everybody sort of celebrate with people when they're winning. Drained it! There's a lot of ways to cheat it, you know, like yeah. if you don't want to get up and, and kind of like use your legs and your whole body to, to shoot baskets, right? right? You don't have to. Like uh, my girlfriend will sit there and play golf sitting down just swinging it sideways yeah. and I'm like you gotta stand up and stand sideways and but she can get a perfect swing just doing this just like right <laughs> but it's like i'm like well it's then i don't think it's that fun i i'm 100 with you i was thinking about it and i was like you know sitting down and doing it is a lot in a, in a way like the archery is way easier if you sit down because your arms don't shake but it takes away from like what the game's supposed to be because part of the point of having the accuracy of the motion plus thing is the fact that you do get that yeah. mm -hmm. wobble you have to account for mm -hmm. Frisbee golf is one that Jay Fresh and I have been playing a lot. And I get up, I stand up, I turn my body towards the yeah, target, yeah. and I fully throw it, you know? And, and I like having it on manual mode so that I release when I want to release the Frisbee. And it is more fun when you get into it like that. Yeah, for sure. I am gonna end up buying it because the games are good enough and it comes with the Motion Plus thing. I mean, the pack and thing sells it for me 100%. Yeah, There's like really no real reason to have to pull out the old sports anymore. You know, it's like, hey, this is some of the, your favorite old games improved plus a ton of new games. So I think that it makes it a good value because yeah. especially bowling and golf take longer to play than mm. some of the other events. So yeah. 
And those are kind of like the longer, beefier games that everyone's going to want to get into. And then, then I don't mind so much that you have all these like water sports and those other nonsense events True. that no one really cares about. Right. I played this much different than I did Wii Sports. Wii Sports, it was 15 minutes, and then it was I put the Wii mode down. I was like, yeah, that's cool. If I have some friends over, if someone wants to play bowling, I'll do it. But with this, I was trying to be my high scores. I was really trying to get good at the frisbee and get good at the challenges with the like the ping pong and some of the sword fighting. So I felt like for you know, more hardcore gamers, that extra level, that one-to-one -one control sort of allows us to, you know, sort of dig deeper into it instead of just sort of learning the one, like, sideways motion you need to do in bowling to get a strike every time. Plus there's, like, achievements and and the, just to unlock more games, I think it's just more well-polished po package overall mm -hmm. because, that, you know, it's like, okay, let's make this something, a, a good standalone product. Right. What if life was like Squarespace? Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. Squarespace offers a uniquely flexible tool for just about anyone, no coding experience required, to build high-end, complex websites with the same functionality and uniqueness that you find on some of the highest traffic pages on the web. Good taste not included. Sign up today and use promo code COOP. All right, it's two o'clock. I'm out of energy, so I can't do anything else in Mafia Wars. Where's Rob? We need to get started. Mm. Oh, dude, you guys didn't hear what happened to him yesterday? No. Oh, man. So he had class yesterday, yeah. and he parked in a certain spot we can only park for like a half an hour. Okay. So during his break, he got out and tried to move it. He drove around the block twice, and there were no other spots except the spot that he had already parked at. So he ended up parking there anyways. And then so when class was over, his car was gone. They towed his car. What? That's bullshit, he man. His he car, moved like, his car? He moved it? Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, God. What was he supposed to do if it's like, he tried to, and whatever. He's got the worst Dude, luck, man. Seriously. Well, so then how's he gonna get to work? Yeah. I don't know.